My name is Mairead Maeve and these poems are to accompany Mary Burke's new art exhibition at home on the farm. The first poem is called Picturesque Newcastle West. The returning exile finds a whiter path and fronds waving at the borders. It might be projection, of course. Memory is a favourite chocolate. South Quay harbours no ship. At one end, you'd almost miss the river. And there she walks, who never looked up, unseeing the new Art Deco furniture shop, stamp of the decade. Here's her little game. She can't step on the cracks, and she counts the footfalls between. Over the low wall, King Heron rules a shaded island, stillest flower in the wind. The doctor's house elves through the trees beyond, he of the Venus nose and bulbous stomach, thought he was funny, threading catcut to stitch her upper lip. No street defines the town. It might have fallen to earth in a fingered whisper, grown itself from riverish breath. Now you know why RTE said picturesque. Her town admired, imagine. Lanes is closed. But once it was the last stop on the homeward trek, where she squandered money and teeth. You have dreamt of them often since Francis died. It matters that you were strung on the same thread. The girl fears anyone with swish, teachers, bankers, big men. She's barricaded as a beetle, shifting as a cat, raptured in her small things. You love her at last. She's only pre-political, a stage, like any creature delved in a pocket of space. It appears we all come back with horsepower, sweeping the scene for a self-same mark. You keep the engine running in case a touch on the old ground will hold you there. Head down, counting your steps. Where is it you're going when you drive on? The picture scanned and stored, her bowed head shrunken to a pixel, and the show due for rerun over and over. This is The Whale, and it's from my narrative sequence set during the famine years. The Whale, August 1846. This morning has nothing to show for it. If it wasn't for a touch of grey, I'd say it was still night. Mammy lifts the swollen door in over the bumps and slides out. There's a low swinging in the air, like an axe. A smell rides in on the back of a snaky breeze. I don't believe it. Death can't call on me. Looking out, it's like a vision. Daddy dressed in black, bending to the spade. Clump, push, lever. Clump, push, lever. Mammy's halved on the broken loy. Now she straightens, scans the desolation, and falls. Mammy never falls. Mammy never falls. Mammy is the gable wall and the fire that always burns. Slumped among the rotting leaves, she starts to moan. Low tone, rattled as a spade slice, reaches to her toes, gathers all her blood, rises through her body, rides out over her throat like a siren stolen from the wind, sear sound of the last beginning, high and aching, river run away from the spring jumping stones. <coughs> Silver and crash. She sways and starts to pray. Daddy stares like at a stranger, then swings his head, mirroring her moves, until they roll together, understanding one plain truth. All down the mountain there are echoes, until the battering thunder and the lightning knives have a symphony going with their prisoners. This life is so confined. Children bawl as if their stomachs bled. They whimper and howl. Their ribs show up with every breath. Mothers come frantic to the doors. 
grasping their shawls like money. Men pound along the paths, crash into the gardens and fields, as though being there, just being there, could stop it, choke it, flay it, throw it from our necks, where it's bleeding us to dust. We are dust. The elements play with us. <laughs>